restless leg syndrome, I'm going to mention four things that you can do right now. Well, three things at home that you can do right now and one thing with me to deal with restless leg syndrome. I have had hundreds of patients with this problem and I have found that if we break it down into four things, you can probably see some, some good results in what's going on with you. Restless legs, what is it? Our legs are moving usually at night. What moves your legs around? Muscles. So what is overactive? Muscles, yes, but what drives a muscle to work? It's nerves, right? So in essence, we have overactive nerves and overactive muscles, and that causes the restless leg syndrome that we have usually at night. It's kind of like some, some people that have ringing in the ears. They might not notice it during the day because there's a lot of background noise that kind of covers it over, but at night you, see, you have it more. Same thing with restless legs. We're moving during the day. We're active. We're using our nerves. We're using our muscles. We're using neurotransmitters. We're using fuel. So we don't really notice it until we go to bed and then the legs start jumping. Okay, two cases I wanted to uh, run past you. A 67 year old female comes into me. She's been a patient of mine for actually 25 years. And so she says, hey, Dr. Fuller, bad cramps, legs are keeping me up at night. What do you have for me? I said, no problem. First question I asked, which is my first thing for you is, are you drinking enough water? The vast majority of people that come into my office are dehydrated. If we increase their water and have them drink half their body weight in ounces, most of that water in the morning, in the afternoon, and less in the evening, so you don't have to wake up and go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, we ask that. Sure enough, she's a good water drinker. That wasn't it. Second, I said, are you taking any calcium supplements? That's going to be number two. Calcium supplements, she said, yes. Are you taking any magnesium? She said, no. I said, this is my advice now. Check with your doctor if, you're, if you've been told to take calcium. Um, so this, this is that I said, stop taking your calcium start taking magnesium. She did that within a few days. Legs are much better. Cramps are down. Sleeping through the night much, much better. This was now several months ago. She has completely stopped her calcium, continued with the magnesium. She's doing great. Second case, very similar. 55-year-old female. She would basically say, I don't have necessarily restless legs, Dr. Fuller, but I have muscle tension at night. Virtually the same thing. Muscles are tense. Why? Nerves are tense. Why? Things are overactive. Okay? I told her the same advice. Are you taking calcium? Yes. Are you taking magnesium? No. So I flip-flopped that. I said, stop the calcium, start taking magnesium. Sure enough, within just a couple of days, she started getting better. Within a week, a lot better. Uh, four weeks later, she says, I'm really sleeping through the night. Great. This is wonderful. Okay? So the four things that you can consider doing. Number one, are you drinking enough water? Half your body weight in ounces, more in the morning in the afternoon, less or trail off to none in the evening. Make sure you're getting enough water. Number two, if you're taking a calcium supplement, remember this, calcium is an excitatory mineral in the body. It turns things on. It helps nerves run. It makes nerves go in the brain and in the periphery. So if we have too much calcium, which many of us have too much calcium, we're, in other words, we're taking in too much calcium, including the supplements that can turn things on and not have a chance to, to shut them down. Magnesium is the opposite. Magnesium is a calming mineral. So we tend to have too much calcium, not enough magnesium. That cal calcium magnesium ratio is out of balance, out of sequence, and that will cause nerves and muscles to fire more at night. So I would recommend stopping calcium. And again, if you've been prescribed calcium or told to take calcium for whatever reason, you need to check with your doctor first but I find that the vast majority of people that are taking calcium are under the, uh, under the assumption that taking calcium supplements is important for strong bones. And that's not true. We think that when we swallow calcium pills, that calcium is going right into our bones and we're getting strong bones after that. And that's not the case. Because for decades in the United States, we've been waging war against osteoporosis. How has that worked out for us? Not so well. So, Stop the calcium, start taking magnesium. How much magnesium? You want to be taking several hundred milligrams. Depending on your, your body weight, size, and so forth, and tolerance, you need to play with that. It's going to take probably three, four hundred milligrams for a lot of you to see a change. I have some, many of my patients on six to seven hundred milligrams per day. I do recommend splitting up the doses in some in the morning, some at night. Some of you might have to play around and take all of it in the evening around dinner time to get maximum benefit at night. So just work with that. 
I recommend the forms of magnesium matter. I've talked about this in other videos. Magnesium malate is good. Magnesium glycinate is good. Magnesium threonate is good. Magnesium citrate can work for a lot of people. Just be, be, uh, be aware that it can cause some loose stools in some of you. Magnesium oxide, I do not recommend as other practitioners feel. So if you've been prescribed that, you might want to consider switching, particularly if it's not working. The third thing, because I told you four things, one is water, two is stop your calcium, take, magne take magnesium. Number three is if those things don't work, I find chiropractic care works for a lot of people. If the lower back, specifically the lower back, but it can be the neck, if the lower back has misalignments and problems in it, that can crank up the neurology in the lower back area, which is going to send more nerve messages down into the legs, cranking up the muscles. So I find a lot of people, if they get under chiropractic care and address their lower back misalignments appropriately, that will help them sleep at night. And as a side note to that is number four, spine stretches, spine stretches. So you've seen it for many, many years on this show. Go to my YouTube page if you want and review the spine stretches. And what I find is a lot of my patients are doing their spine stretches in the morning, but they're not doing them in the evening. So we go through the course of a day kind of irritating and stressing our spine with normal daily life. Driving, sitting, working, bending, lifting, kids, cleaning, workouts, whatever it might be. And at the end of the day, we've built up some pressure and stress in our spine, but we haven't uh, undone some of that. Do your spine stretches at night, specifically the knee roll stretch, lying flat on your back, hopefully on the floor, rolling your knees gently side to side, get a good 20 or 25 of those each side. And I find that's enough to change the local neurology of the lower back spinal cord signaling to the nerves into the leg muscles, that can settle you down as well. So those are the four things that you can try for restless leg syndrome. If you like this video, please make sure you give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We will continue pumping out good information from you. I'm Dr. Scott Fuller. Thank you.